We are officially underway in the fantasy hockey season. Week one has been very telling based off of what we had predicted for this upcoming season. We now know which power plays are more or less set in stone. We now know what roles players are playing in more or less going forward. And so for right now, we're going to give you guys six must add players to add your roster immediately, which should be basically help you win your leagues going forward uh, these players for must add videos are going to be more long-term outlooks uh, versus the weekly previews are just based off of the best streamer options for this upcoming week i know there was a little bit of confusion with that last year people are like oh why don't you suggest player from such and such team because of the fact that they have a great schedule for this upcoming week and the must add players are more so players that you're going to be permanently keeping on your roster going forward for a longer period of time than just this upcoming week so hopefully you guys enjoy here are six must add players to help you win your fantasy hockey leagues to absolutely nobody's surprise we have dylan genther uh, it, it is very clear cut that we've been on him for a long time now, and this is why. He has four goals in two games, his shooting 50%, his shot volume's been fantastic, he's line two power play one, he is only averaging 1440 average time on ice. And you look at a player like this, and these are players that we normally tell you guys to shy away from just because of the fact that they have a super inflated shooting percentage and a low average time on ice. But with Genther, we know this time on ice is going to improve. He just needs to show the coach that he is a primary top six forward that needs to play over 17 minutes a night if they're planning on winning hockey games. And he's in the process of doing that. He's currently 55% owned. And I recommend you grab this guy in every single league possible. Even if you just have him on your bench for right now, this guy could easily score 30 goals and have a great shot volume for this upcoming fantasy hockey season. He's even hitting and blocking on top of that those are going to be a little bit more inconsistent but he has 16.3 shots per 60 right now he is second in the league in expected goals he is eighth in the league in shot attempts per 60 he is a high volume high scoring shooter and you the fact that you were able to get this guy like deep 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 into your draft you guys followed our videos we you know we were super high on him because of this and the numbers leading into this season only showed that genther could hit another level going into next season hopefully you guys drafted this guy if you have him available i would highly recommend you pick him up immediately speaking of players that are red hot right now ivan Barbashev of the Vegas Golden Knights. He was in my weekly preview to add to your roster for this upcoming week. Hopefully you guys did that before the absolutely massive couple of games that Vegas has had. He's center left wing eligible, 46% rostered currently. Uh, line one and power play two for Barbashev. He's playing alongside Jack Eichel, which is always a good thing, as well as Mark Stone on top of that. So two very capable point per game forwards. Uh, hopefully fingers crossed stone stays healthy for once in his career and so that Barbashev can profit going forward he's averaging over 17 minutes time on ice which is great great signs for Barbashev going forward and like I'm just I'm genuinely curious why we didn't add more of a preface on being on him we were super on him last season based off of what he had shown in the prior playoffs where he was very productive for Vegas going forward playing on that top line and so I guess we just looked at the situation last year where it was more so okay he wasn't getting top line minutes and even when he was he wasn't really producing at that rate but he is off to a very hot start right now we know his peripherals are going to be very good we know he loves to throw his body around and it just chips in in those blocks as well and a good shot volume like if he averages two to three shots a game with a couple hits couple blocks even if he's not getting over a point a game he's still going to be a good floor player to roster on your teams going forward especially when he's playing on line one with jack eichel and mark stone he's going to have a ton of offensive upside going forward i highly recommend you guys add him as well to your rosters if he's available and given the fact that he's dual eligible on top of that just adds so much flexibility 
value to your roster. Another player to no one's surprise that is back on the, our videos is Sam Bennett. Barkov is out week to week with an injury. Shocker. Absolutely just completely dumbfounded that Barkov's injured again. Uh, so Bennett should be now line one, power play one, or at least on a line with Matthew Kachuk going forward as people kind of move up their roster. We're keeping an eye on a guy like Anton Lundell as well for those deeper league players. Highly recommend you guys keep an eye on him because he will coincidentally move up the lineup as well and should see more minutes going forward. Over 17 minutes time on ice. This is going to increase simply because of the Barkov injuries. Bennett's going to get a ton of minutes going forward. He has a 35 shot attempts per 60, 20 shot attempts in two games, guys. He's sixth in the National Hockey League for shot attempts per 60. Uh, his peripherals are un unbelievable. We know this. We love him for it. His hits are great. His blocks are great. His shot volume's great. We love to see this out of Bennett. It's only going to increase with more time on ice going forward. If you guys can get this guy on your roster, do it right now. I promise he will pay dividends in the next couple weeks. And if you do... You know, see his role diminish when Barkov does come back slightly. I still think he's a rosterable player on your team, and he should be a great option going forward. If he stays healthy, fingers crossed, he could even be a league winner. Logan Stankoven also had a very good start for his Dallas Stars debut in this season. Line one, power play two, picked up three assists in that game, did not record a shot, uh, but did have a block and a power play assist. Uh, 1229 average time on ice. Guys, we know this is going to increase, especially if he's playing top line currently, which he is alongside Jason Robertson and Rupe Hints. He looks right at home on that top line. If you guys ended up watching this game, this was a very fun game to watch. He's now center right wing eligible, which shows me that Yahoo is pretty on par with adding eligibility right out of the gate. Just given the fact that Stan Coven is just slotted on that top line in game one and they've already added right wing eligibility for him. Uh, I don't know if this is just more so carrying over from last season or the fact that they removed it and then just decided to add it back. I don't know what's going on. Yahoo is very confusing with their eligibility, but I don't know if they're on top of it this year or the fact that they were just making uh, clerical errors here and there. Anyways, he's had an 8.7 shots per 60 over the last season. We know his shot volume is going to improve. I'm not worried about the fact that he didn't record a shot. The fact that he picked up three assists just shows that he's finding good chemistry with his line mates early on. He's 40% roster, dual eligible. We know he's got good peripherals based off of what we've seen out of him in the playoffs and last season as well. So those hit volume and that block volume is his block volume is really, really good actually going forward. So if you guys count blocks in your league, it, it even amplifies his value than it, what it already is. So really high on Stankoven as well. He was in he was on my must add rookies video. If you guys caught that earlier in the season. Uh, definitely keeping an eye on him going forward. And if he continues to see those top line minutes, I highly recommend you add him. Very similar situation. I'd much to Bennett. I'd just much rather add him onto my roster right now and then drop him later on uh, if his role kind of diminishes throughout the season. Adam Boquist, another guy that we were kind of high on and another guy that we were saying, okay, let's make sure we add him onto the roster because he is the power play one defenseman in Florida. He took a puck to the face within five minutes of the game after recording two shots. Uh, for Florida and we know that Florida turns players into gold when it comes to fantasy hockey just based off their style of play and the way that they run their offense but again unlucky he took a puck to the face left the game is now skating back power play one reps I'm recording this on the Saturday currently so the Kings game um, versus Boston is currently on right now so again that's why stats might not necessarily be updated um, but again took a puck to the face kind of unlucky it happens. We move forward. I still think he's worth an add on your roster, especially in deeper leagues. Power play one defensemen are so, so hard to find, especially on the waiver wire. Like the fact that you can get a power play one defenseman who's 11% owned. I, I Again, I'd much rather roster this guy right now, see what his role is for the next couple weeks. I'd rather be early on these kinds of players, especially like the ones that end up being league winner. Great example last season was Brock Faber. You know, once he got thrown on a power play one, he became an absolute league winner because of his peripherals on top of that. That's really the only thing I'm worried about with Boquist going forward is his peripherals. But again, I'd much rather him just sit on my roster right now uh, than some random guy that I'm streaming because he could end up being a league winner. Uh, and it's the same story with guys like Brand Clark, uh, Wallman, Zellweger. All these guys that could be potential power play one uh, players, I'd much rather just roster for right now, see what their role is over the next couple days, um, next couple weeks even. I'm very much a, I will hold until I know what you are as a player type of person. 
Um, so again, up to you guys what you want to do. Highly recommend you roster him, especially in deeper leagues. And finally, I want to give you guys a goalie. Lucas Dostal should get a ton of volume going forward with John Gibson being out week to week. Uh, he just might outright steal the net. He was absolutely fantastic at the World Hockey Championship in the summer. He was the by far the best goalie. I think he's honestly overtaking Gibson right now as Anaheim's number one option. I think he's that talented as a goaltender. There were some other options that we're looking at, like uh, Arison, Wolf, and Moltembo. Arison and Moltembo should get some pretty similar volume, but I think Dostal will just get more off the start of the next couple weeks because Anaheim really doesn't have any other options in terms of goaltenders that are capable. Uh, and Dostal is shown multiple times he can carry a high starting workload. So I'd much rather go with Dostal uh, other than Arison, Wolf, and Montembo. But again, it depends. If you're in categories leagues, probably some safer options like an Arison or a Montembo. Um, potentially. We'll see what Montreal is this year. I'm a little bit hesitant after that just one outright carry price game that he showed uh, against the Leafs there. Uh, but Arison should be a good option for categories leagues going forward. But again, Dostal is much more readily available and 9% owned currently. Uh, so going forward, highly recommend you add him because he's going to get a ton of volume and should be really, really good in points leagues. That is going to do for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below who is a player that you are looking to add on every single one of your teams right now. Always love hearing your guys' thoughts and opinions. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. We have so much more fancy hockey content coming for you guys throughout the week. We've got you guys going forward with trade videos, must adds, must drops, weekly previews. We've got all of the fantasy hockey content for you guys this year. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. I will see you in the next one. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of the day.